and Libre just ruined some of my best videos. And I'm kind of glad they did, but come with me and I'll show you what I mean. So the new update dropped. Uh, this is now Alibre V28.1. And let, let me show you some of my favorite things about it. Let's let's just get a uh, center square going here. I'll say that this is 100 by 100. So I'll be giving you my wish list <laughs> now that Alibre has done so much. What's better than asking for more? Um, I'd love it if the center square already came with a vertical or horizontal down here. If I wanted tilted, then I could always select it and delete that constraint and do whatever I want with it. But, you know, 99% of the time I want it like this because 99% of the time I use the center rectangle to start something. But yeah, let's move on. So we just made a, um, a square here. Well, it's not a square. Let's call it a cuboid because parallelipid, uh, parallelipid. Parallela peeped. Well, we, we just made a square. Well, it's actually a cuboid. Let's just call it a cuboid. The official name uh, is a bit weird. So this is 100 by 120 millimeters of height. So let's let's uh, jump straight to it. Biggest change that I love, the fillets. And let's start with the normal fillet. So the menu is a bit different, but, you know, all of the standard stuff or here, you can see what the new fillet tool does in the excellent video Alibra has put out. I'm not going to exhaust every option here. I'm just going to tell you what I like about it. So uh, check this out. Let's say that I want these two edges to be a five millimeter radius, right? And then let's go with the edges that are straight above them. I want to make them 10 millimeter radius. So what you do, you hit apply, right? And you start the new fillet. Well, with the new fillet command, all you do is you right click here, you add group, and you tell it, I want these two edges and I want them to be 10 millimeters. I just love this. Multiple radius fillets in the same command. And when you hit OK, it's still one fillet here, but it's got multiple uh, radii. And that's the first video they ruined because I had a video on how, uh, on a workaround, how to do that. <laughs> with the old fillet tool, but let me tell you, I'm so glad they ruined this one because this is so helpful. It's so helpful, especially if you're making, you know, like fillets that are concentric to holes and, and, and stuff, so helpful. Now, let me delete this. And next one, variable radius fillet. And that is a big one. That's a big one. Let's uh, select this, this edge to fillet. And you see that I get kind of like a table here. It says 0% and 100%. And I'll say that, at 0%, I want this to be 5. At 100%, I want this to be 3.5, right? This is a variable fillet. Do you see this? Now, we had that before. Let's say that I want, in the middle, I want it to be bigger, right? So what I do now is I click somewhere, you know, close to where I want it. I get a percentage here, which I can change, and I'll make it 50% flat. And I'll say here in the middle, it's 7 millimeters. Look what you have now here. Okay, this is this is a pretty pretty uh, complex surface actually. You st you're starting at five millimeters. You you have seven millimeters in the center, and you end at three point five. So pretty pretty uh, exciting stuff. This was a functionality that was uh, missing in Alibre. You know, it's not anymore, and this is fantastic, right? So I'm gonna hit apply and. Uh, what else uh, did Alibre give us? Well, they also gave us variable chamfer. Did they? Did they give us variable chamfer? Well, you kind of have to get it by yourself, right? This is a trick I used to do in um, in SolidWorks and Fusion. Now I can do it in Alibre as well. So I'm going to project these two edges in, right? I'm not going to be projecting this edge in. Well, let me let me actually do project it. Um, when you change the values, you get some weirdness there. It's a completely new tool. I'm sure it's going to be patched up and, and fixed, but um, I'll show you how to do it right now. So what you do is at the end of those edges, you just make an arc. And what you do is you go into the equation editor here by clicking that little FX button. And what you want to do is you want to give it the same value as, um, as the fillet in that side. The only reason we're doing this is 
because this projection is going to break later on and we do need to keep that. And then what you do, you make this a construction line and you go ahead and you draw this triangle. So this is uh, horizontal, this is vertical, this is fully defined. And then you go ahead and you do the same on the other side, right? I'll do it a bit quicker now. So that is my 3.5, that's D7. Okay. Triangle going. Not one like this, but one bit with a vertical constraint and a horizontal one. Okay. Yeah. I have these things. I'll just start a 3D sketch. And it doesn't really make a difference, the plane that you started in or whatever. So I'm not going to even do my grid and my elevation, my two rules for a 3D sketching, if you check that video out. No, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make uh, a, a projection out of this. Okay, cool. Now in your 3D sketch, I'm going to project the lower one and maybe you already see what I'm going to be doing here, right? Okay, and now, loft cut. <laughs> We take this and we take this and it doesn't work. Okay. Open for you. Ah, so I forgot to turn this into a construction line. And now this should work. Okay, now this works. Very nice. But I also want to add some local guidelines. I'll take this for one and I take. This one as well. Okay, so what do I have now? This is a chamfer and it's just following the edges that the um, the variable fillet created. And what's cool about it is if you go into your equation editor and play with the values of the variable fillet, which are um, D6, D7, and D10. So I'll make this a 0.5. Make this a 2, and I'll make this a 10. Might break it. We'll see. Uh, let's hit OK. It didn't. It worked. Variable fillet. Uh, sorry, variable chamfer. Right. So Alibre by giving us a variable fillet, it also gave us a variable chamfer. Again. Pretty, pretty complicated surface. And now you have a dead easy way to, to, to get it done. This, this is amazing, guys, right? Um, but there's more. There's even more than that, right? And this is where the real ruination of my videos is, is happening because I made three of them. I made three different videos on this subject. And with one fell swoop, Alibre made it all irrelevant, and I'm glad they did because they're making my everyday life so much easier, right? So let's get an M11. <laughs> That's a weird number. Let's get an M12. Um, so this is a hole with an M12 thread, right? And I want it to go through all. But let's say that I want this. I wanted this for a 3D printing, right? And I wanted this to be a model thread. Now, what you would have to do is you would have to go through um, through the little uh, trick I did with Boolean threading dies and Boolean taps, and you can watch my videos. They're irrelevant now, but you can still watch them for fun. Uh, it was pretty efficient. You know, it was a pretty efficient workaround, but now, simple click. You see where it says model? Well, I get a message saying that, look, don't overdo it. You're creating too many surfaces. Your 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 graphics card's not going to thank you for it. But still, I'll hit continue. Um, I'd like to keep this open. It's a nice warning to have. So I'll say continue. And look at this, guys. Look at this. Modeled threads. Correct, right? They are correct. They are 3D shaped. So th th these are printable threads. You can put this in the 3D printer and it'll work. But look, that's not a nice thread termination. It's, it it kind of sucks. Uh, what you want is a chamfer at the start of the thread. Have your bolt go in nicely. Check this out. Check this trick out. 
And now we're getting into territory that uh, I'll show you a trick now that Fusion and SolidWorks do not do. So I'll go for a uh, countersunk hole this time, and I'll say that my countersink it needs to be, of course, larger than the hole diameter, but by how much? Um, the M12 is a 1.75, I think, uh, thread pitch. So you want to add like 75% of that number. It's not an exact number, but I'll go 1.4 here. Um, so, but you want to, you want to add it to the whole diameter. So I'll, I'll just say 11.5. Let it calculate. It, it takes a, it takes a while. Ah, it's marginal. You see how it terminates. It's marginal. Let's just, let's just go 12, right? Let's just do 12. Is it? It's still not very nice. Let's go 0.5. Ah, that's a nice thread termination. Hit OK. And now, not only do you have your 3D uh, modeled thread, but you also have a beautiful thread termination, and this is very useful. And guys, this is not just for 3D printing. Check this out. Let me, I need to save this first. I need to save this first. I'll, I'm going to call it model thread and this is the bit that fusion and solidworks don't even do right uh we turn this into a 3d thread it's actually modeled it's correct right so we can 3d print it but check this out which is really really important right if i make a drawing out of this part so we start the drawing environment yeah let's let's just do a blank sheet for now so it's asking us which orientations do you want to you know show and all that uh, pretty standard if i click more options you see i have selected whole call outs you can select that later but you know i have it here already so i'll click ok i'll enter my views and check this out guys we get the thread call out correctly right we don't need to write it uh, in Fusion, for example, if you do the, if if you model the, if you click the threads to be modeled, you lose this. You can't annotate this as a M12 anymore. You need to put a leader there and, and write it, right? And you also get in the same hole the callout for the correct countersink, which is awesome. It's really, really useful. This is very. The, the, I can't stress this enough. This is a beautiful drawing and it's correctly and beautifully annotated. So look, these model threads, they're not just for 3D printing. They can actually make your drawings look better. Again, if you have too many of these, too many different uh, orientations, drawing is going to look uh, awful, but you know, there are cases where this is going to look considerably better and in these cases you still get the annotation this is very very important okay so there go three of my videos ruined irrelevant and we even get some really really cool uh drawings capabilities which are very welcome trust me these are very very welcome now another thing that i really really like right and it might not make sense in this part it's got too few features but in a large assembly or in a large um model it really makes sense you can search in the model tree this is really really cool so if i go and say 3d sketch it's telling me look this matches two things in the features they're inside loft three this is very very important and this is this is a great incentive for you to start naming your sketches and features which is always a good practice in complex models right it always helps the next engineer that's going to pick up your model or even you if you pick it up you know like three months later three months of working on a thousand different projects or whatever and finally we get another well first of all i'm i'm rotating this and and you cannot see it because you know this is captured at 60 frames per second so it's not going to make a difference for you but um, i always had a problem with libre here in this area right and um you know talking to guys on the forum and looking a bit online it seems to affect asus laptops 
and some older MSI laptops. So it, it's probably something like motherboard BIOS related, but I don't want to go into that. So um, if I assigned a Libre to my the ABU of the processor, then it used the NVIDIA card. And if I assigned it to this, then it used the APU. Now they've got an automatic option. And actually, this works smoother now for me. I don't know what they did. I don't care. It works smoother for me. It's nicer to look at. I'm happy. Uh, so that brings us to our last thing I'm really, really happy about with this update. So I'm spinning this around at a constant rate, right? I'm moving my mouse at a constant rate. And I will now hit and hold the space bar. It slows it down. I don't think, I mean, I don't know if you guys know if SolidWorks or Fusion has this. This is a game changer. This is actually a Libre thinking about the users. And I love it because imagine I've got this huge assembly and I want to look at, at a part through an opening and whatever, and I need to be zoomed in, but then it moves too quickly for me. No. Now I can go slowly. And it's smoothly and slowly. And you can do other things with it, right? Imagine that. You're listening to some music, right? While you're working. And it's like, you abuse me in a way that I'll never know. You abuse me in a way that I'll never know. So, breaking me, shaking me, hit me, break me over. It's cat banging, okay? Don't pretend you've never done it. You've all done it. And you like it. And I like it too. So that's it guys for this video. I just showed you how Alibre ruined some of my best work and why I'm extremely happy that they did because they're making my life so much easier day to day from now on. So yeah, uh, new tools, quality of life improvements, better performance out of the software. I'm happy. I'm a happy guy. Cheers. Thanks Alibre. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next one.